Welcome back to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss news and views about pop culture, science fiction, fantasy, food, cooking, the outdoors, and more. <laughs> I'm going to begin this video by asking the following question. How much is an IP worth? That's actually a very complicated question, because determining how much an IP, or an intellectual property, may be worth can be highly subjective. And there are different types of valuations that, if you attempt to research it, you'll end up with a lot of legal and accounting mumbo-jumbo. So I'll narrow the scope of what I mean by IP to being a work of fiction, which may be produced in the form of movies, TV shows, books, video games, etc., or in some combination thereof. And within that context, the one type of valuation that I believe may come the closest to measuring the value of a work of fiction is what's referred to as fair market value, which is the value of property as determined by the marketplace, or objective purchasers, rather than as determined by a subjective individual. Thus, this would be what an informed and unpressured buyer would pay to an informed, unpressured seller in an arm's length transaction, meaning that the price is based solely on the value of the property, as opposed to selling the property to a family member and giving them a special deal. This definition allows me to make the following assertion, that the value of a work of fiction is directly proportional to the amount of demand for it. In other words, the more demand there is for a work of fiction, the greater its value. And conversely, the lower the demand for a work of fiction, the lower its value. Thus, for someone such as myself to say that a particular IP that is a work of fiction is dead is to say that there is practically no demand for it. In a video that I had released a few months ago, I stated that as far as I'm concerned, Star Wars as a franchise is dead because it was killed by Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy. I have also stated that to me personally, the franchise is dead because I have absolutely no personal interest in it anymore myself. And I believe that that is also the case for a growing number of people. The declining global box office for Kathleen Kennedy's Disney Star Wars sequel trilogy movies provides ample evidence for the declining value of the franchise. The Jar Jar Abrams directed and co-written movie Star Wars 7 The Force Awakens began the sequel trilogy with a massive global gross box office of around $2 billion, $65 million. Then came Ruin Johnson's very divisive and disappointing movie Star Wars 8 The Last Jedi, which had a global gross box office of around $1,332 million which was a drop of $733 million, or 35.5%, as compared to the global gross box office for The Force Awakens. Then, six months later, came the one-off Star Wars movie, Solo A Star Wars Story, which only earned a measly $393 million in global gross box office ticket sales, making it the first Star Wars movie to ever flop at the box office. Then the sequel trilogy came to an unceremonious end in December 2019 with Jar Jar Abrams' dumpster fire of a movie that many, including myself, refer to as Star Wars 9 The Rise of Palpatine, which only earned $1,073,000,000 in global gross box office ticket sales. That was a drop of $259 million, or 19.4%, as compared with the global gross box office earned by The Last Jedi as well as a drop of $992 million, or 48%, as compared with the global gross box office revenue for The Force Awakens. What this represents is a steadily growing loss of demand for the franchise, as well as a growing rejection of Kathleen Kennedy's feminist political agenda through her Mary Sue character, Ray Palpatine, and the massively unpopular and rejected retconning of the beloved hero, Luke Skywalker, that had been created by George Lucas, the actual creator of Star Wars. But the evidence doesn't end there. Even though the Mandalorian series helped to launch Disney streaming service Disney+, Plus, and its first two seasons were widely acclaimed by a large number of Star Wars fans, the third and most recent season that premiered earlier this year was utterly rejected by those same viewers, and part of the reason for that was the appearance of First Order characters to further cement Kathleen Kennedy's increasingly hated sequel trilogy. 
Just look at what happened with that ridiculously expensive Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel at Disney World that was based on sequel trilogy characters. While Kathleen Kennedy was entering the movie theater at the Cannes Film Festival to watch the premiere of her Indiana Jones and the Dildo of Destruction movie, Disney simultaneously announced the permanent closure of the Galactic Star Cruiser at the end of September of this year. Why? As I have talked about in multiple previous videos, including long before the hotel had even opened, it was simply far too prohibitively expensive for most people to ever consider visiting. And the decision to base it solely on sequel trilogy characters meant that it would only ever appeal to an ever-shrinking base of Star Wars fans. In the end, Disney simply could not afford to continue losing massive amounts of money on the Galactic Star Cruiser, so permanently closing it was their only option. Other Star Wars series that had premiered on Disney+, Plus, such as The Book of Boba Fett and Obi-Wan Kenobi, were also rejected by viewers and hardly anyone has bothered to watch Andor, even though it's not a bad series. But too many people have been driven away from the franchise by Kathleen Kennedy. And what about the various Star Wars books that have been written after Kathleen Kennedy declared the Expanded Universe to be Legends back in 2013? Apparently, sales of Star Wars The High Republic books aren't doing too well. Newly released book sale numbers for Star Wars The High Republic provide more evidence that Star Wars is a dead brand. These book sale numbers have come from Circana Bookscan, and were shared by Michael Gallagher, who is the author of Body and Blood, and Declan Finn, who is the author of the White Ops novel series, in a newly released article on the Upstream Review substack. For those unfamiliar with Circana Bookscan, the outlet touts its service as, quote, the gold standard data service that tracks actual retail sales of trade print books in the U.S. on a weekly basis through direct reporting from all major retailers. This includes Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Costco, Target, Walmart, and many other general and specialty retailers selling books, plus over 800 independent bookstores covering approximately 85% of trade print sales in the U.S., unquote. So what I'm about to present here are reliable numbers. Specifically, the two authors shared that the first Star Wars The High Republic novel which was entitled Star Wars Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule, sold just under 119,900 copies in a hardcover format. However, subsequent novels saw massive declines in sales with Kevin Scott's Star Wars The Rising Storm, placing second on the list with just under 59,800 hardcover copies sold. In third place was Claudia Gray's novel entitled Star Wars The High Republic Into the Dark, which sold 58,249 hardcover copies. The fourth entry belongs to Charles Soule, with the paperback version of Star Wars Light of the Jedi, which only sold just over 38,000 copies. In fifth is Justina Ireland's novel Star Wars The High Republic A Test of Courage, which only sold just under 37,800 copies. Not only did these authors share their declining sales, they also compared the publishing initiative's first wave of books to its second wave and determined that Star Wars The High Republic saw a 90-95% to drop in sales between its launch with Light of the Jedi and the current High Republic novels in barely over two years. A drop of 90-95% to in only two years is a massive decline in sales, that represents a total collapse of interest in and demand for the Star Wars brand. And all of these High Republic Star Wars novels came out after the 2019 release of that dumpster fire of a movie, The Rise of Palpatine. So not only do Gallagher and Finn note that the High Republic novels have seen an immense sales collapse from its first to second phases, the book's sales numbers are also pale in comparison to expanded universe stories, such as Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire trilogy. Back in 2014, Florida radio station WUWF reported that Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire trilogy had sold over 15 million copies. At the time, Zahn told the outlet, quote, Nobody knew whether these books were even going to sell. I remember sitting around one day trying to figure out how many libraries there are in the U.S., and if they all buy two copies, how many can we sell? Can we earn out this book? 
And as we now know, Star Wars fans were simmering there below the surface and just boiled up as soon as there was something to grab onto. And they've been going strong ever since. Unquote. Since that interview around nine years ago, Zahn's trilogy has sold another five million more copies, even after Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm chose to remove the books from canon in favor of their own garbage Disney canon. Not only do Gallagher and Finn note how dismal the sales for the High Republic novels are, but they also report that non-High Republic Star Wars books under Kennedy's regime also have dismal sales. Gallagher and Finn wrote, quote, since Disney's takeover of the property, only four books have broken 100,000 copies in sales besides the aforementioned Light of the Jedi. Three of them were written by Zahn. The fifth and final was the first Chuck Wendig novel, whose sales wibbled and wobbled their way into a ditch. Unquote. While they don't provide Zahn's numbers, they note, the five of them have easily outsold every High Republic novel, and the sixth is only outsold by Light of the Jedi. To further show just how dismal the sales numbers are for the High Republic, Gallagher and Finn relayed that Zahn's non-Star Wars books have also outsold the High Republic, aside from the first one, Soul's Light of the Jedi. And it's not just Zahn that's beating the High Republic. Kevin J. Anderson and Michael Stackpole have also reportedly outsold Lucasfilm Star Wars novels with their respective Dune and Battletech novels. Other authors whose science fiction books have outsold the High Republic books include Brandon Sanderson, Sarah J. Mass, Andy Weir, David Weber, Larry Coria, V.E. Schwab, T.L. Klune, Anthony Doerr, and John Scalzi. Given these numbers, Gallagher and Finn noted, quote, These are numbers for one of the biggest IPs in history, in one of the biggest publishing markets with one of the biggest promotional pushes behind it in recent memory. It truly is a dead brand, and bittersweet though it can be to express the thought it deserves to be. Unquote. And by dead brand, they mean Star Wars. And the primary culprit responsible for killing off the Star Wars franchise is Kathleen Kennedy, <laughs> because everything that has occurred with the franchise since late 2012 has been under her absolute control. As I had talked about in my 2022 video entitled My Declining Interest in Star Wars Part 2, Wasted Opportunities, which was over a year ago, two of the many wasted opportunities that I had clearly stated had been thrown away by Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Iger were George Lucas's treatments for what would have been his sequel trilogy and the vast amount of material contained within the expanded universe that Kathleen Kennedy relegated to being legends in 2013. Her poor decisions to reject both George Lucas's ideas and the expanded universe are part of the reason why the Star Wars franchise is dead today. Along with her obsessive need to push her feminist identity politics agenda and hiring writers and directors like Jar Jar Abrams and Ruin Johnson. And at this stage, I honestly don't believe that Star Wars can be revived, even if Kathleen Kennedy's days are numbered at Lucasfilm, whoever succeeds her will be inheriting a massively broken mess. Disney wanted Star Wars to be a cash cow, but Kathleen Kennedy transformed the franchise into a money pit. Thanks for watching today, and a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button and please feel free to share a comment. If you'd like to see more of our videos in the future and help support this channel, please press the red subscribe button, and please press the bell to receive notifications for new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Out Loud Geek.